Yeah. Cahill 2-0. Uh, wasn't as bad of a knockdown as you had in Dublin, but did it worry you in any way when you went down? Um, no, I, I always try and just stay calm in those situations. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just tried to get back to my feet as soon as I could, and that's what I did, and then I knew... I knew after that that, that uh, you know that would have edged the, the round in his, in his favour, so I was trying to push it on him a, a bit more. Um, I, I'm pretty sure they still gave him that round, but um, it, I'm happy with the win. It was an awkward fight, but uh, still wins a win. Stylistically, it, it was almost like mirror images, essentially. And and so, did you have to? Did you do anything different? Was there a different game plan for this fight? And, and it's almost like you were fighting yourself, really. <laughs> what are you saying? He looks like me, or because yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. That too. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. No. He was. He was an awkward fight. Uh, stylistically, he was similar enough to me. I think I'm more of a. I think I, I pushed the pace more in fights, and that's what I did in that in that fight. And that's. Um, I'm. I'm sure that's why I came out with the win. But it was awkward because I knew he he was kind of a counter striker and a counter uh, fighter, and um, I was aware of that. And uh, you know, I, I was trying to let bay him in to attack me a bit, uh, which wasn't really working. And then we were just circling, so I didn't want to move involved in that sort of fight. So I felt like I kind of had to play play into his game, so as not to just be circling around him the whole time. Uh, so it was an awkward fight. Everything that John Cavanaugh says turns to gold. But at the end of the fight, he, he had you decide, and he whispered something in your ear. What was it he said to you at the end of that fight? He just said, "Look, that was a, that guy was awkward, and you did, uh, you know, you did as uh, as as good as you, as you could to make without making that fight stay Also, it was, he was just said, like, "Congratulations." It, it was a split decision. Uh, when he stood there awaiting the judge's decision, were you nervous or were you convinced that you'd won? No, I was fairly confident I won. Um, bit disappointed it was a split. I, I could see. I think the third round was, was close because I was trying. Not, I knew he wanted me to, uh, you know, to attack him and, and him fight off that. So I was trying to reserve my, my, my attacks a little bit. And I think that's why that round was a little bit closer. Um, but you know, I still think I, I came out on top anyway in the third. I just my I, I controlled my aggression coming forward a bit a bit more. What would you say was the deciding factor that gave you the win in the end? I think me just pushing the fight. Um, you know, he he was countering and, and that, that was his game. Um, but I was the one pushing forward, pushing the fight the whole time. Did you feel more comfortable in there, obviously coming down to um, uh, switching to welterweight? Obviously you were middleweight in your last fight. Did you feel more confident in there? Yeah, everything about it, uh, you know, I felt felt more comfortable about everything. I, I couldn't have uh, made my debut in more of a... Um, you know, couldn't have had more eyes on me. It, it was a real, um, it was a real big moment to make your debut. So I feel like everything else after that is going to be easy. So going into this fight, I felt real comfortable, real confident, um, and, and just looking looking forward to it. To be honest, and I did. Like when I got in there, I felt like I belonged. What was it like mentally? Because the Dublin was so loud. Uh, and you come in here, there was some Irish there, definitely. Did you hear them singing Ole Ole? Yeah, yeah, I heard the Ole's, it was just great. You know, you you really, you always hear the Irish sing, singing, you'll never beat the Irish. And I think when they're singing, they're talking about the support because you really can't. I haven't seen any nation in in, in, in MMA that, that supports the fighters like Ireland. I mean, the closest would be Brazil, but I still think, pound for pound, the, the Irish support are the best in the world. What do you think of the Baltimore division? Like, you know, where do you see yourself in this particular division? And when do you even want to fight? Again. I want to get in there as soon as possible. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to get in there before Christmas. To be honest with you, I, I just, you know, I'm just happy to be back in welterweight. That's where uh, you know I feel most comfortable. And I think the division is wide open right now. I know Johnny Hendricks is at the top, but I think since GSP, um, you know, bowed out of the game, I think that the, the top ten, I, I, I can see the, I can see the belt there uh, rotating around again a bit. So I, to be honest with you, my, my goal in the in the you know, I, mean, I, I look in steps. My next step is just to get into that top 15. I have my eye on the on, on the top 15 and getting in those rankings. And I just want to keep keep fighting as much as possible, getting pushed up in there and get start getting those sort of fights. Is there, you know, you said the top 15. Is there any name in, you know, or any couple of names in particular that excite you as opponents, as opposed to calling them out? Who, who do you want to test your skills in there with next? Um, you know, there's, there's, there's loads of guys I, I'd love to. Um, you know, someone that maybe that I think for my next fight more likely it would be someone who's just about to get into the uh, top 15 you know like someone like uh, um, who won the Cote Thompson fight I think Thompson won that you know someone like that he's probably pushing in top 15 now Calvin Gaslam's in the in the top 15 I think he's like 11 or 12 I think that's a that's a that's a really nice fight I would love to love to take uh, I think I think Calvin's a great fighter we're both young guys up and coming and, and, and the future of the division I believe so I, I would love to test my test my skills against him so they're the type of fights I would like and, and uh, sorry, sorry, no one's keeping count, but SBG now are 
15 wins on the trot in the UFC with 16 and 17 perhaps happening today. We, we always ask, well, people have always asked the question, but once again, how important are the, is that group of guys behind you? I mean, every time you guys come out, you get better and better, and now you're getting the recognition you deserve as a camp. Yeah, it's amazing. We're sharing this experience together, and, and it's not a new thing. We've been sharing this experience. We came up through the ranks together. We, we started you know, competing as pros uh, on the local scene, then we progressed onto the European scene together, and then you know, Connor was the first one in the UFC, but now there's a bunch of us in there we're sharing this all together and it's collect you know it's collectively we feel like a family and we're sharing this experience it's it, it's, it's really phenomenal and that's the difference i think when you look at like someone on sbg where we all came up to the ranks there we started as youngsters together and came up to the ranks and now we're at the top you compare it to somewhere like att where they have all the like you know a, a massive stable of fighters in the ufc real top high level guys these all started from different different teams and, and worked their way up to the ufc and then went there we we started together and we have that bond that you can't really you can't really replicate Last question for me, I promise. But uh, you know, at the last press conference, Gunny said that uh, John Kavanaugh should have got the bonuses for you know performance of the night. Did you share any with him? <laughs> of course we did. We have to give him a. We have, you know, we, John doesn't do this for free. <laughs> <laughs> You've fought a couple of times now uh, for the UFC in Europe. Do you have any aspirations to maybe you know test yourself in Vegas or maybe Brazil or different markets? Yeah, big time. You know, I'm I'm dying to get over and and uh, fight in the, in the states. You know, I, I was I was actually born over there, so I have a citizenship. But it's going to be fairly easy for me. I don't need a visa or anything. And you know, the land of opportunity. I want to get over to the states and and and, and uh, get my opportunity. So you know, I've I've been eyeing up the schedules and everything. And like I said, I'm hoping to fight before Christmas. So. You know, there's there's uh, an event on the 13th of December in Phoenix, Arizona. It's the UFC and Fox. I'd love to be involved in that. Or if I couldn't get on that, the Ultimate Fighter finale is the day before on the 12th of December. Um, so if I could get on either of those cards, it'd be, it would work out perfectly. Maybe you and John can share a presidential suite there as well. And that's what John doesn't roll in anything else now. Anymore. There wouldn't be any SBG talent appearing in the final of the tough series by any chance, would there? I know. Yeah, well, that's the big question. So I guess you're going to have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I got one question. You know, from a scale of one to ten, where do you see yourself right now? And to get to that top notch, if you don't believe you are, yeah. what does it take? You know, I, I believe I'm, I'm, I'm world class level. I believe I belong up there. Um, like I said, I, my next step and my next aim is to be in the top 15. And that's where I see. That's where I see myself right now. So it was just about you know beating the guys to get there. So that's where I see myself right now. So that, you're a ten now. Sorry. So you're a ten now. I'm a ten. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not the perfect. Look, I'm not perfect. Like like Connor always says, we're seeking perfection. We're not. We're not perfect. Yeah. If I if I felt like it was perfect, I wouldn't be improving every day. I'm going to the gym every day to to improve to get better. Um. So I'm not the complete package. Yeah. I'm a. a, 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 a Adam, if you're asking me one to ten, but you know, potential boys, I'm I'm like six right now. I'd imagine. I have a lot a lot to go. I'm only. I've only just turned 27. I've I have a lot in me left. S since you mentioned Connor, you know what has he said? for, you know, uh, coming up for this fight for you. And, you know, his existence, pure existence, and, you know, his approach to the UFC, his success, what does it mean? Does it affect you in any way? It's, it's great to see, and it gives me confidence to see, you know, a guy that I train with day in, day out, does the same training as me, um, you know, at the, at the top of the sport. He's about, in my opinion, he's going to fight for the world title next, for UFC title. That's where he's at, and I believe he's going to win it. So he's, I'm training with a UFC champion in my eyes, and that gives me great confidence because I'm doing the exact same thing as him. We've been, we started off at the bottom together, so, um, you know, it's, it's fantastic to be in, in the gym with him. So follow up with, you know, his style of work. He, he does predictions. Yeah. Give us a prediction when you will, you know, be entering the octagon for a title fight. For a title fight, uh, I don't. I'm. I'm just. I look at steps. So I'm. And I'm not at the next step yet. My next step is to uh, get into the top 15. Like I said. So if I was to give a prediction, I want to be going at some point early next year, 2015. I want to be a ranked fighter in the UFC. That's you've got, what you've got tons of love for uh, the Irish fans, and rightfully so. But now that you've actually your fight's finished here, what's your impression of a Swedish MMA fan? The just of the overall MMA scene that we've got over here. Oh, they're fantastic, really friendly people. Um, you know, I, I, I've had a great experience here so far. They're, they're so nice, very supportive. They, they've treated me like I'm a home fighter. I seem to be very popular here, so you know, I'm very appreciative of that. Um, it was my, obviously my first fight in the UFC abroad because I had my debut at home, and I kind of felt like it was a home, to be honest. So thanks to the Swedish fans. And if you were to speculate, why do you think that is that you're so popular here? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> really don't know. They just like me, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs>